Hello viewers, in this video, I will discuss and I will try to explain in my own perspective uh, a travel writing book and the travel writing book name is From Volga to Ganga, written by Rahul Sanskrit, Sanskriti Ayan. So, uh, this is the front page of the book, From Volga to Ganga, Rahul Sanskriti Yana. Ra Rahula Sanskriti Yana. Okay. Uh, if you are watching this video uh, as a student of English literature, uh, if you have opted travel writing optional uh, paper, then you will have to uh, read two lessons of this book. So therefore, uh, I will start with the first lesson. And the first lesson name is uh, Nisa. Okay, Nisa. So if you talk about Nisa, uh, if we, if we tra translate this word from uh, Hindi to English, then Nisa means night or darkness, right? So uh, the first title is Nisa. And this chapter, it is based uh, in the region banks of the upper Volga. Volga, this river, you will get in Russia, if you don't know. And uh, this chapter is about Indo-European people. And this pep uh, this uh, chapter's timeline or this chapter's story's timeline is 6000 BC. Okay, very, very uh, old time. And this story, it takes us back some 360 generations of human life. Okay, so this is not uh, about the present time. It is about uh, some 360 generations of human life. 360 generation. Okay, it is very ancient. And all the races of India, Iran and Europe form one people then. It was the early dawn of mankind. So this is a story about... Uh, when all the races of our India and Iran and Europe, they form one one people, means they, they were one people at the time. Okay. And uh, it was also called the early dawn of mankind, means when mankind was about to uh, evolve, means it, wa it was gradually, gradually evolving, okay, little by little. The evolution was not finished. Okay. So let's try to know our uh, ancestors' history, our... Uh, Great, 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 great grandparents history, how uh, they were living life during 6000 BC. So that all kind of thing. Let's try to know. So uh, that uh, time is evening. Oh, sorry, afternoon. It is afternoon. Today, after how, how many days, the blessing of sunshine has returned. Although with only five hours daylight, there is no vigor in the sun's warmth. Still, there is no cloud, snowfall, fog or strong wind. The sun pours its rays everywhere, delighting the eyes and with their warm touch, releasing joyful feelings in the mind. What is visible all round under the blue sky's roof, the earth is covered with snow, white as uh, camphor or kafur. There has been no fresh snowfall in the last 24 hours and the snow on the ground has crystallized and hardened, but it does not conceal the earth under one unbright covering. Running from north to south is something like a uh, silvery crook line several miles long. So at the beginning of this chapter, the writer has tried to depict the atmosphere, background, and scenario of that time. That time means uh, during 6000 BC when Indo-European people were living on the banks of Upper Volga. Okay. Uh, so the writer is delineating that. Uh, at that time, it was afternoon and uh, after so many days, the blessing of sunshine had returned uh, to them. Although with only five hours daylight, there is no vigor in the sun's run. Sun's warmth means though sunlight has come, but uh, the power of sunlight is uh, very low. It, it is like impotent. Okay, and still there is no cloud, snowfall, fog, or strong wind, and the sun pours its rays everywhere, delighting the eyes and with their warm touch, releasing joyful feelings in the mind. So the writer is saying that uh, the sun has poured its rays everywhere, and it has delighted the eyes, and with their warm touch, warm touch of uh, so the sun rays, it has released joyful feelings in the uh, human being's mind, means those who were living at the time. What is visible all around under the blue sky's roof, the earth is covered with snow. So if you see uh, to any direction, you will only get snow, okay? White as uh, kafur, okay? So everywhere you will see snow, uh, snow-covered place. And there has been no fresh snowfall in the last 24 hours. And the snow on the ground has crystallized and hardened. So though there has been no snowfall in the last four hours, but the snow on the ground, it has uh, 
crystallized and it has become hard. But it does not conceal the earth under one unbright covering. Running from north to south is something like a silvery crook line several miles long. So everywhere you will get a snow, snow line and the, the snow looks like a slivery, sorry, sorry, silvery and uh, you will see crook lines several miles long. And from far away on the hills on each side, it can be made out as the edge of a uh, dark range of forest. And if you look at uh, other uh, direction, then you will see that a uh, dark range of forest is lying on other side. Then the writer is saying, let us look at this forest from a nearer point. Two kinds of trees are the commonest in it. One is the birch and with its with its skin of white bark, but at present bare of leaves. So now the writer is point, uh, presenting us uh, a kind of trees that you will get in that place. And that is birch tree. Birch tree, if you don't know, then you can Google it. It's a very tall tree with small leaves. And its skin has uh, white bark, but at present moment, according to the writer, it has no leaf. The other is the flaw flawlessly straight pine then you will see flawlessly straight pine tree shouting sorry shooting out its branches at equal uh, angles from high up on the trunk with needle like leaves of bright or darker green and their uh, branches uh, are equal angles okay you you will see that the branches of the pine tree they are uh, relatively equal and it's like needle okay it's like needle and the color is very bright and darker green where snow has rested on the trees the eyes that has formed here and there on the branches and trunks makes an arresting pattern of black and white so the writer has magnificently uh, attempted to limb the colorful or the vivid picture of that environment so he's saying that uh, snow has rested on the trees and the eyes that has formed here and there on the branches and trunks it has also made an arresting pattern of black and white hmm? okay let's move on and what else so writer is saying so now what else stretching in every direction lies one unbroken realm of terrible silence so wherever you will see from north to south from uh, east to west you will only get terrible silence because it is the time of 6000 bc at the time the human population was uh, very low okay therefore uh, you will not see any kind of uh, chaos now nowhere is heard the chirp of the cricket so you will not even uh, hear the chirp of the cricket means the sound of cricket um, the caressing music of birds and you will also not uh, be able to hear the caressing music of birds voice of the birds or the sound of any animals and the sound of animal is also hard to get at, at that place right now okay according to the writer let us climb the pine that stands at the summit of the hill and look all around. So now writer is um, requesting the reader by saying that, let us climb the pine tree that stands at the summit of the hill and look all around. Perhaps something else will come in view besides snow, art, uh, pines. So the writer is saying that we, we have seen enough uh, snow, art, pines. Now let's try to see other things. Uh, perhaps we, we will get. Is nothing growing here except giant trees? But the writer is saying, but uh, there is nothing growing in these places except giant trees, giant trees, big trees. Is there no room in this land for little plants for grass? So writer is um, asking the question that is there no room in this land for the little plants or for grass? We cannot guess. So now he is also saying that we cannot guess that. We have left two parts of the winter behind and are now in the third and last. How thick is the snow in which these fallen trees are lying? We have no means of measuring. It may be 12 feet deep or even more. This year the snowfall has been very heavy and all life has suffered by it. So the writer is giving us a new information and that is this year uh, in that place the snowfall has been very heavy and all life has been suffered by it. So if there will be excessive uh, snowfall then people will, uh, pe pe people's life will be miserable. Okay. What is, the, what is this that can be seen from the top of the pine? Now again the author is reiterating the same thing that what is this that can be seen from the top of the pine tree? The same snow, the same forest range, the same reason of hills high and low yes but at one point on the other side of the hill smoke is rising then the writer is saying that we have not been able to see anything except the pine trees forest rains and high hill and low high high and low hills but the author is saying that now he has seen some kind of smoke which is rising from the hill on the other side of the hill in this lifeless and soundless wilderness it is strange to see a ridge of smoke let us let us make for it and satisfy our our curiosity now author, the author is saying that uh, what kind of smoke is rising from that hill? Let's try to find out. And the author is surprised to uh, see the smoke 
because in this according to the writer in this lifeless and soundless wild wilderness who could who could create such smoke let us make for it and satisfy our curiosity so the writer is uh, addressing us by say, saying that let us uh, satisfy our curiosity the smoke was really at a great distance though in the transparent cloudless atmosphere it seemed quite close now we have got very near to it a smell of fat and meat cooking on a fire enters our nostrils so the writer is saying that though the smoke though it looked uh, near but it was really at a great distance and though in the transparent cloudless atmosphere it seemed quite close but it was not the case now we have got very near to it so the author is saying that uh, he is uh, he has got very near to it so it's just like a modern day or present day um, vlog video okay the author is or the the blogger is saying that let's go there let's see this let's try to know that let's try to find out just like that the author is taking us to his journey to his, not his journey our uh, own uh, ancestors journey okay now we have got very near to it a smell of fat and meat cooking on a fire enters our nostrils so the writer is saying that he has got a smell of fat and meat cooking on a fire uh, on fire okay uh, and it it pierced through his nostrils and who who were cooking that thing the writer is trying to find out now and now sounds can be heard so the author is saying that now sounds can be heard and those of small children and th uh, those sounds were from small children we must move softly not letting our footsteps even our breath be heard or else these creatures will become aware of us and there is no knowing what sort of welcome they or their dogs might give us so the author is saying that what kind of creature uh, are there we don't know or the author is saying that he does not know it therefore uh, he is walking very softly okay and he is telling us even to uh, be very uh, very cool and to not make noise let's try to find out who were they and uh, he's saying that uh, if we make noise or, or if he makes noise then the the, the creature will uh, be the creature they will become terrified and they might they may run right or uh, if their dogs uh, get conscious then they will also start to bark that's why let's be silent yes it really is a half dozen of children so now the author has found out that there was a half dozen of children who were uh, creating the smoke all in one house the biggest not more than eight years old and uh, in that house one human was uh, not more than eight years old and, and he was the biggest the youngest one uh, he was only one year and the house is in fact a natural hill cave and the house where they were living it was in in fact a natural hill cave how far inward its sides and rear extent we cannot see for they are in darkness and we had better not try to see so they were uh, under the dark darkness and the author is saying that it's better not to see them now as for grown grown-ups there is an old woman whose hair the color of flax or of smoke hangs in tangle and matted locks so as almost to cover her face now the author is uh, um, is uh, trying to uh, talk about a woman an old woman and the old woman has uh, hair which was the color of flax or of smoke which hung in tangle and matted locks okay and it had covered her face locks means you all know the the, the front hair part okay short hair part but just now she pushed it back with one hand and then at the time she had also pushed that hair back with, with her one hand her eyebrows also are pale and her whole face is lined with wrinkles that seem as if they were growing from inside it the smoke and warmth of the fire filled the cave especially just where the children and our grandmother are so oh sorry not our and uh, yes our old grandmother are so since this is a time of uh, 6000 bc at the time uh, whoever that person swear though we don't have any documented uh, picture we can say or we can address them as our grandmother grand grandfather or grandparents so the author is also trying to addressing them as grandmother to that old woman on the on letters bodies no clothing no covering or since this is the time of 6000 bc that's why people they did not cover their body so the same thing can be seen here on on the letters body is no clothing no covering her two shrunken hands rest on the ground near her feet her eyes are deep sunk and their pale blue pupils dull as though empty still in their taps a spark still flickers flickers 
uh, to so that their right is not quite extinguished. As to her ears, they seem to be doing their duty. She evidently means clearly hears the children's voices very well. Now one child has set up an outcry. So at that time, one children, uh, not children, one child, he started uh, crying and she turns her eye that way. So after hearing that, she turned her eyes that way. There are a couple of children, a boy and girl, two years old or a little more, who are very much of the same size. Both have pallid hair with a tinge of yellow like the old woman's but with a stronger skin with more life their bodies are plump and well nourished plump and well nourished you all know it's very healthy tawny or yellowish in hue they have big deep blue eyes the boy is crying noisily the girl standing up and sucking a small bone she has pushed into her mouth in the quavering voice of old age the grandmother says as in come come here as in granny here so uh, the grandmother she is uh, talking with her granddaughters by saying that as in as in might be grand, grandson, granddaughter. As in come here, come, come here. Uh, this is your granny. As in stays where he is without getting up. But uh, but that son or daughter, uh, as in he or she has not moved from the place. At this juncture, uh, an eight-year-old boy comes, lift, lifts him up in his arms and carries him to the grandmother. Uh, this boy's hair has more gold in it than the small child's, but is longer and more matted. His body, naked from head to foot, is of the same tawny color. It is less plump and straight here and there with dark stains. The bigger boy sets the little one down on his feet near the grandmother, saying, Granny, Rochana, Rochana means light, has taken away the bone. Ejin is crying. So the reason behind the crying was uh, this means Ejin's uh, bone means they were eating something. So Ejin's bone, meat bone was uh, snatched by Rochana. Maybe they are sister or brother okay that's what she's crying now or he's crying now then so we can say he as in is a male here then he goes away and the grandmother lifts as in up in her withered hands withered means all that is wrinkled he keeps on crying and the flowers uh, flowing streams of his tears washes a thick line of skin across his dirty cheeks kissing and fondling his face the old woman says as in don't cry i beat rochana so this thing you will see in every place that don't cry don't cry whoever has uh Said you like this, I will beat him. Okay, like that we all say to our uh, small children. The same thing can be seen here. And she smacks one hand against the cave floor. Bare soil soaked thick with grease droppings of many years. So in order to pacify uh, the small boy, uh, his name was Ezin, because Ezin's bone was taken by Rochana. So in order to pacify him, uh, his grandmother is trying to beat uh, or trying to hit the bare soil so thick okay so just like um, when we were uh, in our childhood days when we were child at the time if we cry uh, for some reason then our uh, family members mother grandmother day or grandfather they just uh, showed us that they are beating the floor or they are beating the wall to pacify us just, just like that uh, even now agents whimpering does not stop but uh, despite so many attempts uh, to pacify him, uh, but uh, still, Edin was whimpering, he was crying, and his whimpering does not stop, and his tears go on rolling. The grandmother wipes them with her dirty palm, reducing the streaks of fawny skin showing on his face to a uniform grimness. Then, to suit the child's weeping, she puts him to her skinny breast. So, uh, now, the grandmother has no uh, other option but to uh, but to give him some something to eat. That's why the grandmother has tried this one new trick, and the trick is, then, let me read it, then to soothe the child's weeping, she puts him to her skinny breast. Skinny breast means very uh, thin breast, breast means you all know, that hang down like dried half-grown pumpkins in the framework of ribs starting out from under her uh, shriveled skin. So since this is uh, our grandmother, so our grandmother is already old, she is aged, that's why she, has, she doesn't have enough um, strength, and therefore her breast is... According to the writer, the writer is saying that her breast uh, is hanging down like dried, half-grown pumpkin. Okay. And uh, it is kind of funny, right? Uh, because uh, the writer is trying to give us some kind of uh, metaphor. Okay. Th that's why he has used this thing. And Ejin closes uh, his mouth in on, on one breast and stopping. So when he when Ejin had got the breast, okay, then he was sipping the breast and he stopped crying at this moment a sound of conversation comes from outside as in peeps in that direction the dry breast dragging at his mouth as soft unpleasant voices are so since uh, the breast of grandmother was dry so there will no no milk will 
be produced from that breast. Therefore, but still, since he is a little boy, he does, does not know it, but he is trying to uh, leak it. He, he is trying to sip it. Mm. So, uh, at the time, one voice, it came out and that soft, soft uh, that voice was very soft and pleasant. And that voice was saying like this, as in, as in, as in begins to cry after. But after hearing that voice, now as in has started again to cry. Uh, two women enter and bang down in one corner. The bundles of wood pile on their heads. Then one of them runs up to Ro Rochana, the other to Ajin. So after coming uh, to the place, the two women who were saying Ajin, Ajin, uh, now after coming to or after coming in sight, one woman she uh, went to embrace Ajin and other went to embrace Rochana. The latter crying all the harder house mama. And uh, that was his mother. And that's why after embracing his mother, uh, the boy was howling by saying mama. His mother frees her right hand and undoing above her right breast, a hairy white bull height dress pine with porcupine quills, wheels, uh, let, lets it slip down. Now he is trying to drink the milk from the breast of her, his mother. So that's it for today. Let's meet in our next video. And sorry for my pronunciation. I have said many times in my previous videos. Okay. Thanks so much.